to Cherry's World. We are here in celebration of World AIDS Day. It is a day of education. It is a day of knocking down those stigmas. I've been a part of World AIDS Day for about the last 20 years. And guess what? There's still a whole bunch that I don't know. But Mr. DeMarco Majors is here and he has put me up on some major game. I am going to let him come on in and share what he knows with you after we put him through the ringer a little bit. Would you like to advertise on Cherry's World and have your product plays on Cherry's social media for the world to see? Email us now at cherriesworldpodcast at gmail.com for low introductory rates. Cherry's World Podcast. Get heard. If you're listening to Cherry's World Podcast on Apple Podcasts and iTunes, please give us a five star. Let us know what you think. Leave us a review. I want to hear from you. Thank you. Saria here, Chief Green Alchemist at Going to Natural. Do you know it takes less than 30 seconds for your skin products to enter your bloodstream? Yeah, so knowing what's in them, super important. We know you want what's best for you and your family. And here at Going to Natural, so do we. We care about the environment, we care about the animals, and most importantly, we care about you. We offer free support for your healthy journey and love providing affordable, all natural products that are responsibly sourced, cruelty free, luxurious, and always made with love. We're not just a shop, we're a community, and we'd love to have you. Browse our collection of plant-based skincare products and natural tips and tricks at shop.goingtonatural.com. That's shop.going, the number two, natural.com. A conscious brand for a conscious community. Use code LOVEEARTH for 15% off your first order. Okay, so this is real life, people. Mr. DeMarco Majors is in the house. Hello, everybody. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. But what you drinking and how come you ain't give us none? Well, you know, I always try to tempt you, but you know, you don't you don't drink no more. But I had to come home and have a glass of wine after work, you know, because they was working my nerves over there just a little, just a little bit. But if y'all don't mind, you know, it's been a long week if I sip and talk. No. It's get, only wine. Get, you know. get you some drinky drink. Look, Courtney's over there. I see his mouth like <laughs> <laughs> I, I swore that I wasn't gonna have another drink until Thanksgiving. So, so I've been uh, clear for about two weeks, three weeks. Why? Why are you punishing yourself like that? Uh, well, Cherry, I've been you know talking with Cherry, and I've been trying to you know try her detoxes, and you know, and I've been trying to do better. So, it's, you know what? I get it as a person who's in the fitness industry. I do a lot of, um, I do consultations every, well, pretty much every day on mental health and nutrition. And don't y'all be judging me just because I got a glass of wine. That's when the Lord leave me alone. <laughs> um, but for, to tell you the truth, I mean, when you really think about what you're putting into your body, it's about the way that you it, it's put it like this what you what you consume is what you express so it's the way that you think about what you're consuming if you're consuming these chemicals and you're already at an imbalance personally then why are you putting something in your body that's in, body that's going to further your imbalance so if you feel the need to detox and cleanse your body while doing something else then by all means your brain is already going to tell every cell in your body to do that because your brain is the head of the army. But anyway, you know, enough about that. I'm I love it. it. So no, 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 no. Before we get into our interview, you already said that you do these consultations. Tell people how to find you if they want your services. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. So I'm in Los Angeles. Um, our studio is called The Training Block. We're at 307, we're at 307 South Orlando 
Um, if you can't find it on your map, we are one block away from the Beverly Center. What I do there is I do consultations based on your on your nutrition and your mental health, which a lot of uh, fitness studios, and I'm not saying we're better than anybody or everybody else, but this is a technique that most places do not use because what's the most important part of your fitness? Your mental health first. So you can find me there. Um, you can also, if you want to do some consultation, get some understanding of what your fitness goals and needs are, you can also hit me up on Instagram, which is at D Majors, uh, DeMarco Majors on Instagram. He is a fabulous trainer and his body is out of control. If y'all don't believe me, go look on his <laughs> social media. <laughs> He's got some pictures and every once in a while I'll be scrolling and I'll be like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be checking my boy out, y'all. <laughs> you know, that's only that's only fair. You know, we we still got your we still got your picture with your American flag. Hey. But, but, but you. <laughs> so Courtney and I were actually talking about you before you came on, right? Okay. Courtney pulled something off your resume, and I was like, what? Courtney, you want to tell him about it? Uh-oh. Yes, this is work with Beyonce. Yes. I was I was very fortunate to um, to be on set with her, and I was, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I got one of those, um, one of those, you know, once in a blue moon things that ever happened to you. I was at a I was at a bar in New York on vacation. These people came up to me and was like, "Hey, you know, you got a good look. And um, would you like to be in a video?" I was like, "Look, homie, I don't even. I'm from. I've lived in California. I don't do porn." And they're like, "No, no, no. It's nothing like that. It's nothing like that." And they gave me the um, the address. I'm like, "Okay." And then this older black man came to me after he saw those people leave. He said, "I really believe that you should do this." I show up the next day, and I see all these models, and I'm not. You know, no model. They from all these agencies and stuff. I've seen their face everywhere. And I'm standing there like, you know, it's just out of place. And next thing I know, I don't even know who that video, who video's for. I see this train of people with cameras and all this other stuff. And I see Kelly Rowland. I was like, oh, shit, that's Kelly Rowland. And then I look over, there's Beyonce. And that's kind of that's kind of how it happened for me. Tina Knowles came and grabbed me and took me upstairs to fit me. She was so sweet to me. I, it was a, it was an amazing experience, and even to the point where they had everybody from the um, from the modeling agencies in front, and I was way in the back by the curtains. I was like, "Oh, you know, hey, Beyonce, you way over there." And then uh, she said, "Out of out of nowhere, because she actually had food poison on the shoot, mm -hmm. and every time she changed the dress, she would throw up." And she said, "Who are my Virgos?" It was only three of us that answered that put our hands up. One dude was like the 19th, the other person was like um, the 16th or something like that. And she said, you in the back. She's like, when's your birthday? And I said, September 6th. And she said, oh my God, I'm the fourth. She said, come here. She brought me to the front and I got to stand next to her as the video started. It was crazy. Oh, and what video is it? Freakum dress. Huh. <laughs> now what's crazy is like, I'm total Beyonce fan like I will admit I love me some Beyonce any day in a week so he said you know your boy work with Beyonce I said he ain't take me <laughs> <laughs> wow. now that was a crazy crazy experience you did something that you know being there on vacation and when that happened because on that same trip I got to meet her and I got to meet Nole Marin, who was on America's Next Top Model, who pulled me into a New York Fashion Week Fashion Week show. And I got to walk in New York Fashion Week, which was crazy. And I decided to stay in New York. And so that's how it happened. Speaking of New York Fashion Week, you kind of got some good karma with that because I was at a DeMarco Majors birthday party <laughs> and I got pulled to walk in New York Fashion Week. <laughs> That was we had a we had an amazing amazing time, um, you know. It just you know that's the way life is around you when you know when you're in your flow, yes. And when you take in that moment and you are grateful for it and you honor your you honor the people around you and you serve the people first as you take care of yourself as well, it just happens. That's, that's how life happens. That's so true, Courtney. What was your other question? Because that kind of weighs into it. You said. <laughs> Uh, 
Courtney makes me nervous. No. <laughs> so <laughs> Courtney's the good interviewer. Like he does all the research and stuff, and I just be running my mouth. So Courtney, you want me to help you out? When we got on, like yeah, that's a sec. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I got it. No, no, you know what? You know what I was gonna say. Well, I, I know what I was about to ask. I think we about to ask. Okay, so we have a little pre-show. You know what I'm saying? Because me and Courtney always get here a few minutes early. We be talking a little mess, and. <laughs> You'll get to see it probably because Courtney will use it. Go ahead, Courtney. Ask your question. Basketball. You you used to hoop? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. I uh, again I played uh, I well I started off um, played a little college ball. Uh, then I got a chance to do a uh, I got a chance to go overseas as a missionary, and then uh, I was playing. I got to play against pro teams and got picked up. <laughs> he, he got some skills. He just always in the right place at the right time. That's what. <laughs> During at that age, when I was younger, that was the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Courtney was asking me, Demarco. He said, "How did you and Demarco meet?" Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. And I said, "He always go to basketball." Courtney is a huge basketball fan. <laughs> And um, I said, DeMarco has been my husband in the club many a nights. <laughs> <laughs> he does not want to know our shenanigans. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> those are the kind of stories I'd like to hear. <laughs> so. Now we, you go first. You go oh, first. <laughs> I was going to say, so actually there was this event and it was Gay Pride. I don't even know what year it was. I don't either. But. DeMarco and I were invited to be the host up at Gay Pride this year in Fire Island. And we met in transportation on the way to Rhode Island. Oh, so y'all met going to the event. So you didn't know each other before you got to the event. No. No, we just, it was, it was like an instant click. We just started talking and I was like, do you know what this is all about? And she just started talking to me. We started laughing and joking and then we, right when we were in the hotel, we just stayed around each other. And everybody was coming around us. And we were just, you know, it's not, we weren't stand office, but we were just having so much fun laughing and joking with each other. Yeah. And then everybody, people are coming up to us. So that's been our theme for probably, it's honestly, it's probably been about 10 years now. Probably. Like, well, or more, we don't, we don't know. No. <laughs> We were pretty that weekend. No, we it's been it's been probably people eater. It's been more than ten years because my baby's my baby's five, so yeah. six years I've been you know like being mom. Yeah. So it's probably more than ten years. It has. Well, shit. Purple people like eater. <laughs> <laughs> you hey, you remember that purple people eater? That drink was crazy. All right, what's the purple? It's, it's a Slurpee that sets you up. That's all it is. It's a Slurpee that, sl- that sets you up. <laughs> Look, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you the type of person that I'm already a person, you know, I got high energy. I'm, I'm an introvert, but I got high energy. And, you know, I can go. Don't do when it. You drink that drink. It's, look, you come to life. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Don't. I mean, I say do it because I, you know, I, I'm not gonna use it yet. I'm gonna see how the, how how Terry be talking before I pull out her her moment. If you're over 30, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. It's a setup. It's a setup. What's the ingredients? Honestly, what, my friend okay. made it at this at my favorite sports bar called Jim Sports Bar in New York. And he just, it was a purple slushy. And I, all I know is like, there's got to be, a, I, you can't even taste the liquor, but it's got to be at least three or four of them in there. Don't do you know, it. You, <laughs> it. Look, that drink made her quit. She bowed out for life. She was done. Damn. I get <laughs> Damn. Don't do it. Wow. But um, I did want to, I did want to go go back really quick and to tell you about a little bit about basketball because you know many of us um, always dreamed about playing ball and uh, 
not a lot of people where I'm from who were way better than me. I was just that person that got was fortunate enough to keep working, keep striving, and being a man, and this is important, I hope people understand when I say this, I'm a man that happens to be gay. And being of that man, when you get to play basketball and be who you are in your own truth, it's not always seen as something great, but I, my experience is worse. Because he can walk his ass off. <laughs> And what you mean by that when you, could you, like, uh, specifically said a man that happens to be gay? Did I say that right? Yes. Well, most people like to say that they are, they use their sexuality first. And that sometimes people, especially when you're young and you don't understand who you are in terms of you don't know your mental, emotional, physical, spiritual health, you identify with, you identify with your sexuality first. My identity has never derived a sense of self from sexuality or sexual orientation. Right. That's why I say I'm a man that happens to be gay. Gotcha. Beautiful. I don't know if you know this, Courtney, but I kissed a girl um, several years ago. Beautiful girl. Her name is Jalissa Lynn. She's actually been one of the guests on our show. And 750,000 people clicked on Media Takeout <laughs> And was on my Twitter and my Facebook trying to figure out if I was gay, straight, bi, <laughs> lesbian, whatever. And I love the ride. So I never confirmed or denied my sexual orientation because I don't understand why it's important. Um, what do you feel about people like me who just, I mean, you know what I am, but... <laughs> the world, I, I won't answer them because I always just say, hey, are you hitting on me? Does that bother you that I have never given a straight answer? Absolutely not. Um, because one of the things that we as human beings first have to understand is that you don't have to answer to nobody. Right. And, you know, and I know it's kind of a funny thing to say. Uh, my mom used to say this to me when I was five and six years old. You ain't got to do shit but stay black and die. And die. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. And, we, and that resonates with me. So no matter what, people people forget that or are not truly educated on the fact that your sexual experiences are not your sexual orientation. Oh, okay. I and, never thought about that. And to, and to take that even further... Remember that it's sexual intercourse. So whether you kiss and suck and touch and feel, and that has nothing to do with your overall innate response to attraction. And okay. your innate response to attraction is what you're born with. Now, some people, they've never had to say they were straight. They just went out, got with a man or a woman. Right. For me, when I was, when I was, and, you know, coming out of college and all these other things, because I never, uh, during that time, during high school, college and all that stuff, I never dated a man. I never dated a woman. You know, I was going to school. I was playing ball. I was in church, you know, and not because I had a religious background. It was simply for the fact that I knew if I got distracted while I was in school, yeah. I had two siblings who needed an example. And I had to figure out a way to make some money so I can get my sister stuff out of there. You were so, focused. That was, I, you know, I was focused. I've had people ask me, well, have you had a problem coming out of the closet? And I'm like, I've never been. I think that is the dumbest expression in the world. Because the only time I'm in the closet is when I'm getting dressed. I've never been in the closet. I don't have any secrets. I, my little brother felt the need when he turned 18. I guess he wanted to let his mother know and the sperm donor know that he was coming out of the closet per se. And he did like this whole video or whatever. And I was the one in the family who didn't like blink. And he was like, well, why are you not responding? And I said, well, first of all, I've known since you were a kid. And second right. of all, I don't feel like you had to say, hey, sis, I like boys. Because... <laughs> That was like, you're my little brother. I was never going to be in the bedroom with you anyway. That's weird. So 
I didn't care whether you were the boy or girl or anything. I, you know, I'll, I'll share this with you, and I, and you know, well, this, is, like this. This, this is this is my take on it. Uh, just because I share a part of my truth with you doesn't mean I'm coming out of something. Right. You're being you're being invited in. And that you're being invited into a little bit more of me. Now, just because I tell you what what I've agreed is a, a sexual um, is my sexual orientation doesn't mean that that's my overall person or my overall truth. The very first thing in this world, I am a black man. Right. That's a, I'm a black beautiful man. black man, too, honey. Well, hey, <laughs> <laughs> but two, we also have to understand that our language can cause other people yes. to create a prison around their own humanity and telling people that they're coming out of the closet. They feel like they have to fight through so many things in order to share who they are. And a lot of people learn survival before they learn love. And loving yourself has to come before survival. But when you're a young man or a young woman in this country, especially a person of color, and you come into the gay community, your fear first is black people. Really? Black tr- yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of people... Especially may not black church. <laughs> I, I, I came from the black church. I was, you know, a teen minister, a campus minister, all that type of stuff. I got to speak at Shoreline Amphitheater, you know, in front of 10,000 people to tell a little bit about my story at 19 years old. I went to... Argentina, Brazil, New Zealand, Fiji, um, and got to talk about faith and hope to people. I didn't even speak their language. I have a question. How is black church still a fear for the gay and lesbian, transgender? I never get the letters right. I am sorry, but I'm part of your community. Um, How are they still in fear of the black church after Medea? Like, there would be no Medea (laughs) if it wasn't for the black church. That is true. I don't get it. That, that is true. That is a, man, that is a great point. I never thought about that. Then there would be no Tyler Perry if there wasn't for the black church. He hit the Christian community first. So the Christian community has no problem with gay. They have no problem with cross-dressing. They have no problem with transgender. They have no problem with a man dressing like a woman or acting like a woman. So how is the black community afraid of the black church? Well, let's do this first. Okay. Let's, let me take you through the journey of fear. Okay. Because a lot of our history is rooted in, um, in a higher power. So the first thing that people do they didn't look at him in that dress. They didn't look at the tambourine player or the choir director there. You know what they did? They first looked at what their fear was because when they start thinking about Adam and Eve and all this other stuff, Adam wasn't like this. They, God didn't make Adam and Eve. He, he didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve. But your name's Tony, but he made you. So I, that shit don't make sense. No, because Adam but, had a wife before Eve, but Okay. That's a whole other conversation. But the truth is, is that they think sexual deviance. So that causes a lot of fear because a lot of us who are, who, you know, grew up in urban communities and all that other stuff, our families were not open sexually. They didn't talk about, you know, the birds and the bees with you and what have you. You learned a lot of your stuff on the streets. You know, and unfortunately, again, you know, some of these topics are hot topics for people. Everybody knew the choir director was was gay. Everybody, you know, but but you get these conversations, you know, but he thanks for the Lord. But you. That's sin. You're not supposed to lay with one with men like you do with with women. Yeah, but you sitting here telling me that I'm not supposed to be this, but you are sloth and gluttony, one of the seven deadly sins. 
<laughs> but but you also probably have that picture of white Jesus in your house, and it is a known historic fact that that white Jesus was the Pope's son who was sleeping with the artist who made the picture was a man. So the church picks and chooses which sins they want to uh, emphasize on. Yeah, because I mean, it's a, it's the um, I mean, you also have to take the church back to a a white supremacist hierarchy as well. You know, of how they of how they project projected themselves. Nobody actually ever talks about the version of the Bible that everybody looks at, the King James version of the Bible, but King James actually had a eunuch. What are eunuchs? Men who have been castrated. What did they do with their eunuchs? They were their best friends, confidants. They were their rom- romantic partners aside from their queens. But nobody wanted to talk about that. Hmm. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. <laughs> track us all on religion but it just it just blows my mind today we are actually here to talk about a really really important topic that you have schooled me on so much because i just didn't know and i want the world to know we are here in celebration of world aids day aids and hiv education demarco absolutely the the whole conversation i had about prep and pep came from mr demarco majors so He's been schooling me for years. DeMarco, can you tell us about your whole experience with AIDS and HIV? Absolutely. Um, it's not an easy topic because there's, again, like we were saying before, there's a lot of fear um, behind it because there's miseducation and knowing and understanding. Uh, when I was um, when I was in my 30s, um, you know, I had an unfortunate event happen to me and you know, personally, I don't like to go to that what happened. It's what I'm doing. You know, I didn't just, you know, my first couple years when I found out about my diagnosis, I thought that I was marked for death. I really did because, you know, being in San Francisco where I went to, or I lived for several years, you've seen people with, um, you know, facial corrosion, you know, with for facial wasting, you see protruding bellies, you see how harsh, you know, 15, 16, 20 pills per day and what it was doing to people's bodies. And you thought, as a young man, you know, I was, I was 24 years old. I was a virgin until I was 24 years old. And when I, when I hit 31, you know, this thing happened to me. And it was one of the most um, heartbreaking moments because I just learned how to accept myself and I wasn't fully in love with myself and I had other things that were going on around my life, you know, at that time, you know, like I was talking about before, you know, you go from, you know, you're in music videos with Beyonce, you're on, you know, you're doing New York Fashion Week with Nole Marin and Fran Drescher is there and she's giving you a high five and, You know, you have all these amazing things happening to you. And then all of a sudden, the nurse looks at you. And you tell her a little bit about your backstory, about your life, you know, things that you've been through because she wants to know what's going on. And when she looks at you and starts crying and says, you know, you're, you're positive. My fear wasn't first. You know, I'm going to die, even though that was that came milliseconds later. It was. How do I now share this with my family? And am I educated enough on this to let them know that this won't beat me? You know, so I sat there. I consoled, and this I know this sounds funny, I consoled my nurse, I gave her a hug, and I told her I was going to be okay. That's you. Um, yeah, that's you. That's you. you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's um, DeMarco. Um, I consoled her, and I gave her a hug, and I told her it's going to be okay, and that she needs to be strong for the rest of her day with the people that um, are going to be coming in here. I told her, you know, regardless of this, you know, I'll be fine. You know, days later, you know, when it all starts to set in, you know, you realize that you're not fine. It took me a couple years 
to gain, you know, to gain the confidence to realize that, and I'll tell you personally, what changed for me. When I got my medication, I looked at that pill and I realized that there are people who seen what was happening in the AIDS epidemic in the 80s, who decided whether they were gay or straight, that this is something that they, as, that's a dream for them to help people that were dying by the masses. They studied every single hour at school. They didn't miss any, you know, any test or anything like that. They got accepted into med school and they dreamed for a better day for people like me. So when I had that pill in my hand, I knew the, I didn't know them personally, but I knew the effort that went into that one pill that keeps me alive. And I don't take that for granted. That you are the most, I, Courtney, I know you don't know this man, but this man right here has the kindest heart, the purest spirit in the whole world, if you can't tell. And he is just the most giving and loving soul in the whole world. To even think about that you put that thought into that pill. What you're saying makes so much sense, but I don't know if I would have embraced it at the same exact way. Your journey is honestly so beautiful and you're so dedicated, not just to everyone, but you've been dedicated to me to make sure that my journey in life is, is different. And I take different precautions to make sure that that doesn't, you know, it's not my plight. And I commend you so much for that. I love you so much for that. And I know that nurse will never, ever, ever forget you. I don't know if I told Courtney earlier in the show that you were positive. Um, I wanted him to get to know you as a man first, because I think the <laughs> humanization of the story makes you respect the journey, want to learn about the journey and understand it so much more. So. Yeah. Hey folks, this is your real estate agent slash investor, Andre Key, and I'm with Central Metro Realty, serving Central Texas, but I can also work in all 50 states, including Canada, helping you with your real estate issues and concerns, whether you're a buyer, seller, investor, wholesaler, flipper, Come to me with your real estate concerns. We definitely have the key. You can find me at keyofaustinhomes.com or Andre Key, Texas Real Estate Agent on Facebook or Team Key underscore TX on Instagram. Or just give me a call at 512-815-3539. Again, that's 512-815-3539. Andre Key, Real Estate Agent, Investor. Reach out to me. He is the last name, no gimmick. I just happen to be in real estate and I have the solutions for you. So I am playing a game of truth or dare with Courtney and I picked dare. The dare is we are gonna take some of your audience questions on Cherry's World Podcast. Hashtag us on Twitter. I'm Cherry Johnson 75 and hashtag is ask Cherry. We'll filter through and whoever asks the best questions will win a Cherry's World Podcast t-shirt. Make it good. Can I say this? Um, and, and, and I lived, well, before I joined Cherry's World, I always thought I lived a, 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 a big life and I saw everything, but I, I guess I lived a kind of sheltered life. But what I always thought, you're the exact opposite from what I always thought I would see with someone with HIV. Because I'm just thinking about if it was me, you know, I mean, I told the story before. I, doctor told me you need to take more vitamin something because I wasn't. I had stopped eating red meat. He said you're not getting something, so started taking vitamin this. And I, I think I did it for like three weeks. And I, the, those pills are in my duffel bag somewhere else. I, I can't even take vitamins. You know what I mean? So I'm behind on that. Thank God I don't have high blood pressure. I have to take no medication or nothing like that but just the fact of what you have to deal with and how you keep a positive attitude i mean i'm so irresponsible i couldn't even take vitamins so the it's, it's, the, it's the exact yeah. opposite I was, you know, let me i get i get what you're saying and i'll and you know let me um 
you know, let me, I'll say this to you. Um, I had to learn, I had to learn in the, um, in the moments that I suffered. I was fortunate enough to have people that were put on my path that had a little more compassion and understanding than I did. And through that suffering, I was able to gain enough balance and peace to move on because I wasn't always balanced. I wasn't always peaceful. I could speak it, but I wasn't it because, you know, and, and you understand, you understand this, you know, maybe more, a little bit more than Cherry. And I'm not excluding you, Cherry, but as black men, we have to be perfect in society. And that fear of not being perfect can destroy you. And there's something that I've always clinged to is that, you know, God will only promote you in your life to the level of the tolerance of your pain. If you can't manage where you at right now, then how in the world can you get to the gift that you truly are? And my talent was sports. My talent was, you know, other things, but my gift is where my purpose was. And if this is on my plate, obviously God and the universe believe that I'm supposed to do something with it. So if I sit back and I keep my mouth shut, even when it hurts, even when I don't feel like it, even when my introverted self be like, I don't want to talk to nobody, you know, even, even coming to, you know, having this conversation with you today, do you think this is easy? No, I was, I tossed and turned and I had to, you know, sit back and, and ask God to forgive me, you know, and I'm not talking about the religious part of it. I'm talking about when you have a conversation with God and God has a conversation with you and you feel it in your spirit because that's who I'm connected to now, regardless of whether you like me, love me, what indifferent, I have to do right by my heart first. So unfortunately, this is what comes out. How, how has your life changed since um, you uh, told people that you ha have that? And, and the reason why I ask that is that um, I, I watched a documentary on magic and the way, and I never, I remember being 12 when he first um, made that announcement. I never forget that. And then, Me neither. and then when he um, like came back, he actually tried to make, he actually made a return the following season. And he didn't go past preseason because he got elbowed and then he started bleeding. And the hush went over the crowd and other teammates and everybody was just, they, you know, they treated him like, like an alien. We just said, enough's enough. And Carl Malone was one of them and they all just walked away. He just walked away from the game. And uh, I just wondered, like, uh, you know, what is it like for you? You know what? Um, there were several different versions of, of me. As we all, you know, you grow up, you mature, you have immature moments, all these other things. Um, you know, it was it was really hard because I had to go through moments where, and this is very very personal. I had to go through moments where. I was self-destructive to myself yes. and I, you know, I was influenced by things that, you know, you realize even in relationships, like I tried to, I, you know, cause you want to date, you want to be around people, but then there's this lingering thing and that, you know, I wasn't the boisterous, super confident person you know, when I first started coming around the gay community, all these other things, even in basketball, I just wasn't that person. You know, when I jumped on the court, it was a totally different man. It's just it's something came out. But how my life changed, it did. My moment did. The way that I went about my thinking did. And I had to really commit because, you know, I had moments where, um, 
I had moments where I was sitting there and drugged and overdosed and you wake up and you didn't even realize what had been done to you. And you have to really, instead of getting bitter and getting hateful and getting angry, you have to own the fact that what you're going through is meant for the healing of you and someone else. And if I stopped right now being who I was called to be, the people that's on my path may not get the blessing that they needed. So if I stop, if I don't open up, if I, if I don't do this, and I'm not saying that this needs to be on a global scale. I'm not looking to be famous. I'm actually here to be effective. So all the shit that I went through, I had to go through it. Because there's going to be people, whether you like it or not, that will see you, that will listen to you, that something will resonate with them, where they will get the power and the strength to go get tested. Because it starts with just being able to get up and go get tested. You know, when I first moved to L.A. and I shared this with Cherry, I was like, holy shit, this magazine wants to talk to me about my journey. You know, and, and am I ready to talk about that? Am I ready to do that? And... Of course, Cherry does what she always does. She starts with, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they gave him the cover, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then when you see her and she goes, yeah, you're like, oh shit, what am I really, what am I really fearful of? It's not, I'm not, wasn't fearful because of other people. I was fearful because the parts of me that weren't healed yet, the parts of me that thought that man could dictate my future, I was given power over to somebody else and then I had to realize that when I was created, the power was given to me, so stop giving it to somebody else who don't even care about you. Absolutely. So I let that shit go. I love it. Absolutely. So that's, how my, that's how my life changed. I love yeah. you. I love you. I'm so proud you know, of you. I love you. you know, th okay, so this is not the only Cherry's World that we've ever done about HIV or AIDS. Last time we were on with a lady named Cece. That's how she says her name. So I love, I love Cece. <laughs> but I thought it was important that we have a man's point of view in honor of World AIDS Day. So in honor of World AIDS Day, I need you to do a little education. I need you to okay. tell us what medicine are you on? A lot of people still think that people are taking like these 20, 30 pill regiments a day, and that's not what HIV is anymore. It's not. It's not at all. The advancement of, um, well, the advancement of education. First and foremost, you have to educate yourself. There is too much out there. Listen, if you can search for filters on Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat, then you can search for information to be supportive of your brothers and sisters who have something that they may not understand. Absolutely. So, you know, my, um, I'm on Strybeld. Strybeld is one pill. I take one pill every single day. That keeps everything balanced for me. It's not harsh on my liver, which you have to make sure that these medications that are out there are not harsh on your other organs. Because, you know, and a lot of, and a lot of time, a lot of people don't realize that, your nutrition is also a part of your medication, your mental health first. So when I take that pill, you know, I actually take the, my medication and listen, I'm not some guru. So don't sit there and, you know, take and, and say that, you know, and think that I'm not some guru. I can only tell you what I do and I don't do it every day. Well, I take my medication every day, <laughs> but I don't do certain things every day. But the main things I, um, I wake up, I come to my kitchen, I drink coffee, I sit right in this chair, I turn my meditation music on, I pray, I meditate, I breathe, I go to my cabinet right over there, and I take my medication. I get my mind right, because remember, every cell in your body is waiting to be given an order from your brain. And don't forget that when you take that medication, when you tell your body, and every cell what to do, and the antennas go up, and your frequency goes out, and the energy of who you are brings other people to you. So I know that if when I take this with 
right mind, with right understanding. I'm so proud that I'm taking a medication that is one pill. Now, there are other people. Now, I'm not putting anybody down who has to take two medications or and something like that because that's how your body's regulated. Right. But when you do your, when you make sure that your nutrition is on point, and don't get me wrong, you know I love my pork chops and, you know, I cook. I cook. I'm, I'm 235 <laughs> pounds. I eat. But I make sure that my med- my nutrition is right with my medication so that it does work the right way so that I do have a long and healthy life. What are the side effects that come along with your medication? Are there any? Well, I can only speak on Stribo. I've never had one side effect. Not Beautiful. One, and I'm so proud to be able to say that because I've I have people that I know who have had side effects, who had yes. you know stomach issues and different things like that, and it it did make me fear, and it also pushed me to make sure that I stay undetectable. So you know? your blood comes through undetectable. Yes, that's something else that people don't understand: positive, negative, undetectable, detectable. Can you explain a little bit of that to folks? Well, let me let me put it to you this way because I like to smile about it, um, and nothing against anybody who's still fighting to get to that, that place. Undetectable means untransmutable. I cannot do that because I'm on top of my medication. Now, there are moments in your life if you don't. Um, you can go without it like a couple days. Um, but remember that when you're not taking your medication, you also put yourself at risk for your strand to actually mutate. So, cause, so you end up getting a different medication. That's why when you get your medication, you stick to that. You stick to your medication. Now, sometimes throughout your time, you know, doctors will change it. So when you're detectable, that means that you have a count that's a little bit lower and they can detect it in your, um, I'm sorry, I lost y'all. You can, they can still detect the virus in your bloodstream. Mm-hmm. Undetectable, undetectable, it goes undi- unnoticed. So it's not as, it's not noticeable in your bloodstream. And because of your medication, you can't trans, you can't transfer it to someone. Negative, of course, you don't have the antibodies. Positive, you're HIV positive and your antibodies are still trying to work, figure itself out. But when you're undetectable, you don't pass that on. So it's very much important that when you have a conversation, that when you do talk to someone and they say, hey, you know, I'm HIV positive, your best question to ask them is, are you undetectable? And this is not about, hey, let me put a condom or something like that. No, you need to have a conversation as adults you know, before you make any types of moves, because, you know, some of the conversations I've had to have before even engaging sexually, you know, do you have STDs? Because when I've been a person who's HIV positive, Mm -hmm. STDs are worse to get because it ruins your immune system. And then your medication don't work for you. And then you can get pneumonia. And then those causes of pneumonia can kill you. Absolutely. I love that you're like telling us this because a lot of people won't go into it. What else do you want everybody to know like what is something that somebody hasn't asked you that you think the world needs to be educated on because us lame brains we we don't really we don't know um it's not something that i want you to know or be educated on it's just that um please please um gay people people lgbtq uh, every every acronym (laughs) <laughs> this out there. Um, first and foremost, I'm not a monster oh, because I'm positive. And secondly, take time, you know, because, you know, especially times like this during this year, seasonal depression is real. And people who are LGBT and who are HIV positive, whether you're gay, straight, or whatever the case may be, um, educate yourself because you might run up on somebody who might be in their last moments, not because of the virus, but because they're tired of thinking that everyone is going to be against them. Because I went through that. I truly believed 
that because I was influenced religiously, because people would say, you're going to get AIDS because you're gay and you deserve it. You're going to die. That's sick. All the while, you on your second husband, your, you got, you know, whatever your issue is, you got all that going on. Yet you want to condemn me to hell because of a moment. Um, and I would really love people to have a better understanding of what the look is. Guess what? There is no look. You want to know what HIV looks like? Baby, look at me. Because you was in my DMs before I even said that shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? There so, is no look. There, I... there is no look, and it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't, you know, it's not just, you know, a gay thing. It's not just a straight thing. It's a we thing. Mm-hmm. It's a humanity thing. It's a government-created thing. And you must know and educate yourself so that when someone speaks, even if you don't agree with, you know, somebody who's gay or somebody who's bisexual or, or transgender, even if you don't agree, educate yourself enough mm-hmm. to come and talk to me from a place of love to help me change. If I'm wrong at something, educate me. Don't dehumanize me. Don't treat me bad. Don't yell at me. Don't scream at me because I fight you. But <laughs> <laughs> and but, HIV and AIDS is not a gay thing. That's it's not a gay disease. The, most of the people that I know who are living with it are straight. So that's a major misconception. And my fear is also, um, you know, especially being an uncle. My fear is for my nieces. It is because, you know, the way that our society treats young men sexually, because they're not, they're not taught these things. You know, when you're a young boy and, and you, and you touch yourself and they say, stop, that's nasty. Mm -hmm. You know what you grow up thinking? Oh, something's wrong with you, that you're nasty. And all you did was touch it because you don't know what the hell that is. Yeah. So we're internalized and subliminally messaged and conditioned to believe something like that. So when you do that, especially when you're a rebel, and God knows I was a rebel, um, <laughs> don't give me no rules. But <laughs> but if you if, if I could give one real real answer is please educate yourself first. Even if you even if you want to be an asshole and make points to prove somebody wrong, educate yourself to the point where you can change my mind and help and help heal my heart. Because I'm willing, I'm open. But if you come at me and you're not educated, you're not open, that could do more harm than good, which is why I take these opportunities, you know, to have these conversations because I do not have it on right. And all the shit that I've learned, I've had to unlearn because I was taught by another person's traditions and with their own fears and anxieties. And I also knew that, you know, I was attached through an invisible umbilical cord to so many people and things, you have to release yourself. I don't know what your spiritual practices are, but sage yourself, release yourself from other people, release your, at least other people from your own anger, from your own anxiety, from your bitterness, your resentments, and then come to a place of peace where you could have a conversation that could be built on love. Mm-hmm. That's, that's in every walk of life. I was going to say, that's what every walk of life. You know, I just went through that. I have spent a couple of years working on myself mm. with through relationships, forgiveness, forgiveness of other people, but more so forgiving myself. Yeah. And that's the, that's the hardest part. I had a question for you. I'm a news guy. I'm always on the news. And so CNN, some people say CNN is fake news, but it says scientists discovered first new HIV strand in nearly two, two decades. Have you heard about this? Yes. Is this, Real? Um, well, I'll put it to you like this. I'm not a scientist, but I will say, you know, made me nervous. You went and put your glasses on. on. Well, I, uh, I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> he got real serious. I, 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 Walter Cronkite, come on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, when the news puts something out there, out like that, you have to also remember that if something 
if there's something new, it was something old, and there's already a um, cure for it. It's simply the fact that, hey, guess what happened? AIDS turned to HIV. Same strand, but people are living. Now, how do we make more money? Let's take the HIV medication that kept these people alive since it's proven that and give it to people who are HIV negative to protect them. Well, see, I, I was going to go that route, but I didn't know. I didn't want to come across as being insensitive. But that's what I, I'm with you. Like, I think it's all just a money grab. Mm -hmm. Of course. I, I'm not, you know, whether I'm right or wrong, this is what I feel. I just feel that big farm, you know, hey, you have a lot of people that passed away. There's a lot of medication that's left on shelves. And how can we, it's been shown that people who had unprotected sex with someone and was exposed to HIV took a pill called PEP. You took PEP for 28 days. What was PEP? Truvada. So they realized, oh shit, if we sell this to negative people, that's going to suppress the opportunity for the, AIDS, the HIV virus to actually infect those cells. Those cells. So now we sold a shitload of, you know, prep to people. Oh no. Now they're finding out that some medications can cause, you know, osteoporosis and paralysis and all these different things. Hey, there's a new strand out there to scare more people. What does more people do? S scared people spend money. Yeah. It was just it was just like what you was talking about earlier, Sherry. You know, when you talk about religion, well, think about it. Some people, you know, I'm not gonna say no names because they putting out al Christian albums and all this other stuff, but showed up in the best sheep linens. And what do church people do? They smell a sheep. They didn't look, look at him. Just like they don't look at the Bible. They don't study the Bible. They smell the sheep. They didn't see the wolf. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, That's I, insurance. That's what insurance companies do. I think AIDS and HIV are just like cancer. All, all it is is a different form of cancer, and it's something that they have the cure to, but they don't want to cure people because there's too much money in it, like the common cold. I was approached by a man in Northridge, um, California, who the do this doctor created this machine that was like a dialysis machine, but a little more, you know, in depth that filters out your blood and cleans your blood. And every and I hope people understand that there there was a procedure where you could pay thirty thousand dollars. To clean your to clean your sperm in order to have a ba if you're HIV positive to have a baby, so um, this machine replicated that, but with the whole body to filter out the blood, clean it, and take the antibodies out and do that. And it's supposed to be a cure. The it, other cure is supposed to be a pill. There's supposed to be another cure that's a you know a drink. Was the, the filtering of the blood, was it oral chelation by any chance? You see, you, Not you that I know that. about it, Big Farm. I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's basically just like you do when you sit down in dialysis and you sit yes. there and it takes your blood out and refilters it, filters it back into your body and your skin gets brighter, your energy, your, you know, your pupils, your intestines start, you all start to break down all the feces and all that stuff and bile that's in there, gets rid of everything. You're basically a whole new person. I mean, they do it for cancer patients. I mean, you well. know, we have celebrities that do the whole um, vampire blood transfusion things to keep them younger. Yes. You know, the vampire facials and things now. Okay, don't want to get onto that. We don't, we don't need we don't need to CDC on our ass. We ain't got no cure. Cause let me tell you something. If I had a cure, my boo wouldn't be sitting here today talking about World AIDS Day. Okay, so how important do you feel that days like World AIDS Day are? Hmm. You want to know my? I'll tell you two things. Okay. World. AIDS Day is more important for it's amazing for people living with HIV because on this day even if you've never told somebody you get to read stories of people living at Triumph that 
you know, because on World AIDS Day, and that's why I'm doing the piece that I'm doing to show people the success of it. Because, like, you shouldn't be proud, you know, to have this. Well, that's ridiculous. Guess what? I'm, I'm still living. Yeah. I got to be proud of me. I got to do something. But in all honesty, it's, you know, people and young people get to read these stories and they see what people are going through and they see how they've been successful in their own personal lives when they didn't give up. So it's just like, it's, that's amazing, but it's also a great tool for people who are HIV negative to be supported because a lot of, and that's also another reason why I'm doing the, my projects because I want people who are HIV negative to realize that we support you too. We support you. We love you. I don't look at you and say, man, fuck you. You negative. You, you healthy as fuck. Cause I tell you the truth. I know a lot of negative people who, who health habits is shitty as fuck. Yes. You just, you know, you just fortunate, but it's a great day for many people to actually serve other people to be in support. Cause guess what? You know, people are no longer dying by the hundreds and thousands every single day. And I always would say this, big shout out to the lesbian community back in the 80s and the 90s because those were the people that stood up and went to the hospitals and served those a lot of those men who were dying like crazy. Beautiful. They stepped up like crazy and they need to be honored. And I don't think within the community that they get enough, you know, praise for for what they did and what they're even doing and how they're doing it. It is very important for us to have a World AIDS Day. It's not about promoting your this um, virus, but it's an education, it's an awareness, it's a togetherness. What do people go to churches for? To yeah. be around faith-based people, to get that energy to give them another day of hope. That's what World AIDS Day do. You know, I get emails weekly, daily from people in countries, and I love to think that I'm well-versed on geography in countries I ain't never heard of. I don't even know how you even know my name. Shit, sometimes I don't even know my name half the time. <laughs> but I get emails from people in these places that said, I read your story, and it gave me the courage to travel on a bus to get to another city so that I could get tested. Beautiful. Are you are you kidding me? Beautiful. You you got that from something that was placed in me. So no, am I not saying that you know praise me because I'm speaking out against it? No, serve people because there's people in need and understanding whether you're negative or positive detectable, undetectable, you people need your energy. They need your love and guidance. And that's why World AIDS Day is important because it's for us all because we're in it together. Let us know about your project and what you got going on in our World AIDS Day. Okay, so DeMarco didn't really want to do the show, but what <laughs> happened was <laughs> the stupid little text message was sent out and I turned it into something else. <laughs> Completely. Sorry. I love you. Thank All I wanted you to give me one little soundbite, but your ass is grand, and you got to turn everything into, into like I said, <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. I'm on the red carpet for the Emmys because of your black ass. <laughs> well, you know what? It's just that I want to serve, too, and I don't right. know what else I can do to help serve except for use everybody who's grown up with me. You know, I got a lot of friends, True. man. I've been growing up with people for 37 years, and I want to continue growing with them. And I want them to know everything I know. I want them to know and love the people that I know and love. And I don't know how else I could serve better than to let everybody who grew up with me know what it is that's going on. We want to know about You could have bought me a plate of macaroni and cheese or some greens <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, brought this whole conversation. But no, I'm, I'm proud of you for, you know, for extending the olive branch and giving your, you know, I don't want to say your, I hate saying fans because yeah, these are no, not your fans. These are, my your, friends. these are your people. Yeah. These are your people. And giving um, 
them an awareness and an opportunity to be able to listen and ingest and take it for themselves and make their own decisions about these things. So this World AIDS Day project that I'm doing, I've had this idea for a, a long, actually funny thing, I think since we met, I had this idea. Really? And I wanted to get people involved, but my life didn't match. Well, let me say this. This project didn't match what my life was. I had to go through a lot of things and or and experiences in order to learn the lessons to be able to convey a message that was truly genuine, heartfelt, and to reach the people in a place where they are, especially in today's time. This project is about um, togetherness. It's about togetherness because whether you are male, female, whether you're trans, you know, transgender, what, whatever you identify with, this virus is not dead. It's not dormant. It doesn't dis. There are people who are living in areas of this country, even this country, that don't have resources. There are people living in places all over this world that don't have the opportunity to see people that look like us. And so they listen to all the horror stories. They listen to the people who have passed away. They listen to the stories. They see people, you know, who are in hospital beds, you know, on their last leg. But they don't get the stories of how me and my friend, and I can say this, you know what? I'm a man that happens to be gay. I'm HIV positive. First, I'm a black man, and I have a friend. And her name is Cherry Johnson, and she supports me. Of course. Not a lot of people can always say the parts of them and every version of them, whether they don't, whether they are in love with themselves or not, can talk about a person that supports them. So this project is about us supporting each other, having and knowing where you can find the resources. Not to mention, you can resonate with stories because that's going to be interviews with different types of people, different types of lifestyles, different types of understanding. You will have somebody that you can resonate with because representation matters. And this particular project, which I want to make ongoing, but this particular project will be that for people. Beautiful. And that's why it's important to do. Beautiful. Well, I want you to know that you have a home at Cherry's World. Our door is always open. Please come back. Please use my blog. If you have something you want my blog to post, if there's anything that we can do, let us know. Thank you. And, you know, and I, let me say this really quick. Um, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I'm, I'm very, very proud of you. And, and, and you've always been, if it, don't nobody know you, you've always been extremely outspoken, <laughs> um, overtly outspoken. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you took, you took ownership. Because, you know, here's the thing about life. When you own your, when you own your truth, nobody can hurt you with it. And you allowed yourself to be in places, especially, I mean, come on. You are Cherry Johnson. You know what I mean? And for you, and when, because of course, when we sit down and I go up, Cherry, like, you're like, huh? No, no, no. You're Cherry Johnson. And, and you are that person that when we think, when we feel, when we have nostalgia of our youth, you're a part of that visually that's so weird <laughs> and 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 when, when when i talk to you i don't see you know punky and you know family matters and your films and your books i see the woman that transformed from an idea to not just a not a star I really believe that you decided that when you became a mother, you owned what 
most women do, which is the motherly part of the universal energy. And you decided to put certain things away that were your leisure enjoyment, enjoyments because you decided not only will I be a mother to this young lady, there are other people who are going to need advice, who want to write books and want to encourage their child. Let me give them encouragement. Let me show them the way. Let me give you the blueprint. You know what? Most people are charging people $700 to do this course or take this acting. You know what? $5. You want some information? You want game? I got 37 years of experience. $5. $10. You know what? Let me put this out there so that you let me give you some free game. You transformed it to that. And I'm so proud of you for doing that because Thank you. that wasn't even a part of your idea. You were ready to do books and movies and fly to the moon. <laughs> so just to let you know, what DeMarco <laughs> is saying is he has watched me go from a rock star to a soccer mom. <laughs> and it's so weird. And, and, and DeMarco, let me say something. Um, as Cherry's producer, uh, as you said, some people get paid 700 we ain't, we ain't doing no more thirty five dollars, five dollars. <laughs> we ain't doing. I just well, made an executive decision. <laughs> well, I'm looking at. I'm looking at. Cherry, is that your kitchen? Welcome to Cherry's world.